Square Enix is known as making some of the best RPGs in the world, with some of their flagship titles like Final Fantasy. You go on these fantastical fantasy adventures as an amazing badass. In Final Fantasy VII, you're an ex-soldier from a super military group helping a terrorist group. In Final Fantasy IX, you're a thief who goes on a mission to kidnap the princess. In Final Fantasy X, you're a star athlete who has some daddy issues. Who is then thrusted into another world where you go on to save the world and somehow know how to use a sword. Blitzball, the sport our main character plays, is actually the first thing you see in this game and they make it look awesome. But I'm sure people will be skeptical since this is Square Enix. They will spend their whole budget on just making the cutscene look amazing. It looks like this in the cutscene, but it plays like this in the game. The game is a bit confusing, mainly because they just throw you into a difficult game for first time players. So, here's a small tutorial on how to play Blitzball. No need for that long boring tutorial they give you. Blitzball is a turn based football soccer in a nutshell that is played underwater above ground. It works by levitating a giant ball of water in the air, which is the playing field. Even though it's a giant sphere, you will notice that the players still move in a 2D plane. A waste of space if you ask me. And that the players control themselves. You can actually change that so you have control of the players. You can press one of the face buttons that play on the controller you have that will open up a menu that will allow you to change from menu A or menu B. It's best to switch to one of the menu options because the AI is not very reliable or smart. The difference between the two menus is that menu B lets you control the character based on the camera. Pressing up makes you go forward, although it's a little difficult with the changing camera angles. Menu A controls the players from the perspective of the minimap. If you press up, you will go north of the map. The question is, would you rather focus most of your attention on the player or the minimap. Sadly, you can only control when you are on the offensive and only the player with the ball. Everyone else is controlled by the AI. You can manipulate how the AI moves by using formations, which can be accessed when you pick your menu A or B movement. But I barely used it, so I'm not sure if it's very helpful or not. While you have the ball, you can press another face button, the play on the controller again, which will take out the action menu. This menu gives you the action of passing, shooting, or dribbling. These are self-explanatory, I believe. If you look at the menu, you will see a number next to the pass and shoot. That number is the cost in HP of the action and the stat of that action. So they're one and the same. Every player in the game has eight stats. Health, pass, shoot, block, speed, endurance, attack, and catch. All these stats are used when you are engaged in an encounter. An encounter happens when players from the opposing team get close enough to the player with the ball. More than one player can go into an encounter against the player with the ball. And usually anyone with the red ring around the player usually gets dragged into the encounter. Once the encounter starts, it becomes a turn based battle. And they face the player with the ball one by one like those karate or action movies. Don't power the guy, he's just one guy! If you're the one with the ball, you have the option to break through one or more players. Choosing this option will put your endurance against their attack. Anyone that you didn't break through will put up their block against your pass or shoot. If any of your stats hit zero during the encounter, the ball will either be taken, intercepted, or fumbled, depending on what you do. Shots that get past the blockers, or if you just shoot, will go up against the catcher's catch. What is interesting is that, let's say, your shot stats is lower than the catch stat. You still have a chance. The game will randomly assign a random number between 50 to 150% of the catch stat number to go up against your shot. So an example would be if the catcher stat is 10. It will secretly change the number from a range of 5 to 15. This will make the shots that are close much more intense because you don't know what that secret number is. But 
if the number is too high or too low, it doesn't really matter. That bit of randomness does keep the game exciting, in my opinion. Something to keep in mind though, is that with passes or shots, is that while they're traveling, that stat will gradually go down. Also, encounters also have that secret number change, with attacks and blocks, but they never say the percentage range for those. But I think it's the same as the cash range, but I'm not 100% sure. To spice things up even more, the game has techniques. Techniques are like the equivalent or skills or magic. If you're playing this game, you probably know what those are. There are a good amount of techniques that vary from attacks, shoots, passes, and a couple of others. Three stats that affect ailments are shared between all of the techniques. Venom, which drains the HP of a player faster and does not allow the player to use shot techniques while they are poisoned. Wither will cut one random stat in half except for health for some period of time. Then there is Nap that will cause a player to fall asleep and they will be out of the game until they wake up or are woken up. It's neat that a lot of techniques have their own animation. And the attacking animation look like they hurt. With the wither tackle the character winds up a punch like Donkey Kong. Knife tackle he just drills you. He just turns into a drill and goes like bzzumba. And with venom tackle I don't know how the fuck he's doing this underwater. But I don't want to get hit with that. During these animations, you also get the chance to copy the techniques. If you see the word tech copy flashing at the top of the screen, you can press one of the face buttons again depending on your controller, allows you to learn that technique. The timing on when to press the button is a bit tricky though. What I did was press the button right before they launched themselves or the ball. Before you're even able to get the tech copy prompt, you will have to mark the player with the technique. When you start a match, or during halftime, you will get the chance to have one of your players mark an opposing team player. If the technique is highlighted blue when you're marking the player, it means you're able to copy that move. You can also expand the number of techniques a player can learn by learning that player's key techniques. You also have to be careful about your player's level. If their level is too low compared to the marked player's level, they won't be able to learn that technique. To level a player, you will have to use them throughout a blitz ball game. During halftime and at the end of the game, they will give out experience points to players. Leveling a player will increase the stats of the players and the number of techniques they can use in a game. What is very interesting is that they also show you the experience gained from the opposing team players. And it's because you can recruit them. After every game, they will tell you when a player's contract ended and if the team don't recruit them, you can hire them. You can recruit them by finding them on the overworld. But good luck finding them since the game does not tell you where to find the player. If you do find them, you will have to pay money to play a certain amount of games with them. I do recommend finding replacements because the Besaid Arx players all suck. There's a reason why this team is considered the worst in the game's story. Because they all suck. To actually play Blitzball, you will have to unlock it first after playing the first mandatory game, and it will show up as an option during save points. Blitzball has three different modes, League, Tournament, and Exhibition. League is a 10 game season where they give you points based on how you win. 3 points if you win, and 1 point for ties. After 10 games, the winner is the one with the most points, and you get a prize depending on your position. The Tournament mode is a single elimination tournament which also gives you a prize depending on your standing. There are a variety of prices and the end game prizes are Waka's overdrive attacks and a piece for his ultimate weapon. Not much reason to play Blissball after that besides having fun with it. In exhibition matches you get to play against any team, but you don't get any experience from it. It's mostly to find a player with a specific technique that you want to copy. I found exhibition matches to be a complete waste of time and only tried it once until I found out that I got no XP from it. There are only two things I recommend with playing Blitzball. First, switch automatic movement to one of the manuals because the computer is dumb as a brick. Secondly, try to get the jet shot the first time around. If you fail the first time, it'll take you a while before you're allowed to go back and try to get it again. 
I also recommend having it for when you have to face the Luka Gores on the first game you are thrusted into. And whenever you're up against those damn cheating machina using Albed. Their stats are way too damn high. They have to be using machinas to perform better or some shit. I think Blitz was a fun minigame. It was fun and a nice distraction from the main game. The prizes for winning the minigame also do help you out in the main game, which is a plus. There is some strategy in calculating your chances to try and figure out whether to break through or use techniques that drain your HP. Although in the higher levels, you can pretty much span all the techniques that you want without a care in the world. The idea of turning a sport into a turn-based action game was neat. The game was challenging and almost unfair when I started playing it until I got the jet shot. With the jet shot, there was more back and forth between me and the other players. I stood a chance against the cheating Albed. But once I got my own Albed baby, brother, oh brother. Brother was the LeBron James of my team. He was shooting half court shots. He became the team. So, I recommend you get him too when you get the chance. You have to go very far into the game to get him. I hope you enjoyed today's little tutorial or overview on Blitzball for Final Fantasy X. If there is a game that you think I should look into or deserves a bit of a tutorial, let me know on the comments down below. Also, check out my other two series, Diagnosis, which is my thoughts on games, and Checkout, where I just make small goofy skits on games. But, as always, my lovely patients, I thank you so much for watching, and tune in next time. Bye.